Sean, we're again at an FQXI conference and always dealing with uh, um, state-of-the-art or frontier topics, some would say over-the-edge over topics. <laughs> uh, but now we're talking about uh, events, the physics of events. That seems like so 19th century. Or what's a, why are we talking about it? Well, it seems so classical in some sense, right? In classical mechanics, that is to say, the view of the world we had before quantum mechanics came along, there was space, there was time, Einstein came along and Minkowski and said, well, it's really four-dimensional space-time, but still, they're both there. And we came up with a technical, happy definition of what an event was. An event is a point in space-time. That's what it is. You locate yourself in space and time. Now, quantum mechanics comes along and things become a little bit more difficult because quantum mechanics says it's space and time. Well, maybe they're part of the fundamental architecture of reality. Maybe they themselves are just emergent. Maybe space and time are not yeah. fundamental. In any event, things happen in indefinite locations in space and time. Thing happen, things happen smoothly and gradually rather than at individual points. So what is even an event in a quantum mechanical context? And I think my answer would be events are some outdated relics of our classical past. They are at best useful approximations in the quantum world. Sometimes they're just not even useful at all. So you're saying that uh, events are, uh, are, 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 there are no events. It, it, I would say at the <laughs> deepest, deepest level, events are not a useful concept. That's right. So uh, what substitutes for it? The wave function of the universe okay. is the most all important right. thing from my point of view. And uh, again, taking quantum mechanics seriously radically changes our perspective on these questions. When you have the wave uh, function and you decohere or you, you select one of them or one becomes our, right. our universe, is that not an event? Well, that is something that happens as the wave function evolves, but it doesn't happen in a location. In fact, in people who, like me, who believe in the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, disagree about whether or not when a quantum mechanical event happens, does the branching of the wave function sort of spread out at the speed of light, or does it instantly happen all throughout the universe? You can sort of imagine formulating consistent versions of the theory either way, huh. and then you ask yourself, does it matter? And then the answer is probably not. Really? And if it doesn't matter, then why are we talking about but events it's, uh, this Why way? wouldn't that matter? That sounds like an enormous difference, whether it propagates at the speed of light, which means it would take uh, 45 billion years or whatever right. the, 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 you know, to, to reach or instantaneously to create a new world. That's right. And the reason why it doesn't matter is because if you and I sitting here, if suddenly some quantum event was measured in the Andromeda galaxy and branched the wave function of the universe, and we said, okay, so therefore our universe right here suddenly branched into two, but those two are absolutely identical from our point of view. There's no difference between them. So uh -huh. you and I don't even notice that we've suddenly split in right. two. I see. I see. But we wouldn't have noticed anyway, because we, if we're in one of however many, we, we, we would... Well, if we cause it to happen by us doing the observation, like if we see an electron is here or right. there, right. then we notice in the sense that, oh, I saw it here. I know the equations say there's another version oh, okay. of me that saw it over there. Okay, okay, okay. But what you then postulate is in, in because quantum, um, uh, the wave functions are happening all the time and all, in every place. So in all of these places, there is a nesting of multiple worlds in, in this kind of multiplicity of, of almost infinities? This is exactly what we would like to know the answer to, but we don't. This is some a good, open research question for we ever I mean, it sounded what I was saying was absolutely bizarre. I know. I, well, I, but again... I didn't intend it as a, as a research question. I intended it as something <laughs> that sounded ridiculous, the fact but you that took me seriously. The fact that ridiculous or bizarre does not mean it's not what quantum mechanics says happens, right? That's like, in any interpretation, something bizarre is going to okay. happen. In many worlds, all the splitting of worlds is a useful way of talking to we human beings about the underlying quantum wave function of the universe. If you didn't want to know how we human beings should talk about the wave function, if all you wanted to know is what is the wave function doing, then everything is 100% crystal clear and unambiguous. The only thing is that we're layering on top of that some useful vocabulary for us. But wait, wait, there's, a, there's a difference between a useful vocabulary and understanding it better and it really being that way in, in the totality of existence. Well, it's very much like, it's an emergent phenomenon. It's very much like the air around us that we talk about as something with a temperature and a pressure and a velocity. We know that really it's atoms and molecules, right, mm -hmm. moving around. 
end, when we talk about it as higher level of right, emergence, right, right. that's an approximation that would break down if you only had one air molecule in the room, sure, right? Sure. Likewise, talking about branching and worlds is an emergent phenomenon that is a useful approximation in certain circumstances. It's not part of the fundamental description of many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Okay, so in reality, what's happening because there are quantum measurements Define measurements without sentient creatures in some right. systems way, all, all over the universe, happening multiple trillions That's of right. times yes. per second. That's right. And so, so how do you get the the many many the, branches? The, That's the, right. the, the 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 permutations and combinations of all of that. Well, the fact that it happens often or a lot or it's a big number, you know, once you say, well, okay, there can be two or five or a dozen a multiple dozen. universes. Mm -hmm. 10 to the 10 to the 10 universes shouldn't bother you, yeah, honestly, right? right? I mean, right, there's just right. a lot of them. Okay, so uh, what the more interesting question is, I mean, do I need to say that I do branch over here every time a far away event exhibits a branching structure, or can I wait until some signal from there oh, gets to me, that, right? That's an interesting and, question. And we don't know the answer. There's sort of different people with different opinions about it, and maybe it, it's just sort of two equally, way good, equally good ways of talking.